This is Dr. Clayton Lane. This video will be a demonstration of the surgical treatment of a shoulder dislocation termed a Bankart repair. The anatomy of the shoulder makes it inherently unstable. If we look at this diagram here, we see it's a fairly shallow ball and socket joint. Some would say it's analogous to a golf ball and a golf tee as far as the stability that the bony structure provides. The factors that keep the shoulder from dislocating are first and foremost the rotator cuff pictured here. As you can see the rotator cuff envelops the ball of the humerus and through complex con contractions throughout the shoulder range of motion keeps the ball of the shoulder centered within one millimeter of the center of the cup of the glenoid. Additionally, scapular position is important. You can see from this diagram how there's also a complex motion of the scapula in order to aid keeping the ball of the shoulder centered in the glenoid. And some would say that this is analogous to a seal balancing a ball on the tip of its nose. There's also the ligaments, of course, which is the uh, focus of this discussion today, which serve as check reins to uh, prevent dislocation at extremes of range of motion only. Again, remember through most of the normal range of motion, the rotator cuff is able to keep the ball centered. Additionally, there's smaller variables such as adhesion and cohesion. These have to do with the ligament, excuse me, the liquid uh, properties of the joint fluid itself. And additionally, there's a suction cup effect of the labrum, which is pictured here which is a gasket around the cup of the shoulder, as well as a vacuum effect of the capsule, um, which is essentially a water tight or air tight bag around the joint. Well, what injuries occur with dislocation? Well, let's go to a simple diagram, somewhat like our golf ball and the golf tee. This diagram represents the shoulder as seen from above. Here we see the ball of the shoulder, our humeral head and then the cup of the shoulder or glenoid. Additionally, there's uh, the labrum anteriorly represented by this brown triangle. There's also a posterior labrum. And then attached to the labrum is the ligament of the shoulder, most notably in this case the inferior glenohumeral ligament. And the reason that inferior glenohumeral ligament is so important is because 90% of dislocations are anterior as seen here. So as the ball of the shoulder slides forward, the inferior glenohumeral ligament pulls the labrum off of the glenoid. Occasionally, it pulls a piece of bone with it, and this is termed a bony bank cart tear rather than a standard bank cart. There's almost always also an associated indentation or impaction injury to the back of the humeral head, and this is termed the hill sacs lesion. So how is this treated? Well, you can see as the shoulder has been reduced and put back in place, that doesn't mean that the ligaments and the labrum fall back into place. So if this is allowed to heal like this, or not heal at all, you can see how the check rein to anterior instability is now gone, and this would allow the shoulder to dislocate on a recurrent basis. So with the development of arthroscopic techniques, we're able to repair this now by placing an anchor in the front of the glenoid, which has stitches attached to it. We then use a special suture passing device to pass the stitches through the glenohumeral ligament and around the labrum so that when we tie them down, the labrum and the ligament are reduced back to their anatomic position on the glenoid surface and if allowed to heal will prevent dislocation of the shoulder in the future. So here we have the shoulder of a 17 year old who dislocated it as he was sliding into home plate and as I push the shoulder forward you can see the hill sacs lesion on the back of the humeral head there and in the front of your screen you can also see the labral tear where the ligaments tore it away from bone. As we get a closer look, you'll also be able to see the inferior glenohumeral ligament in the bottom right hand corner of your screen attached to that labrum. So the first thing we're going to do is shave away any loose soft tissue or early healing scar tissue that's developed and freshen up the bone so that it's bleeding and will, be, will promote healing. Here you can see again mobilizing that labral complex using an elevator 
This is the view from above now. This is a lot like that diagram you saw earlier of a shoulder dislocation. The glenoid or cup is at the top of your screen and the ball of the shoulder is at the bottom. And there you see me mobilizing the labrum and ligamentous complex and again roughening up the bone to promote healing. There I'm targeting my first anchor and once it's drilled and in place you can see the sutures firmly fixed to bone. Now I'm going to use that special suture passer we spoke of to pass one arm of the suture at a time through the ligament and labral complex. So here you see my assistant coming in from the back portal retrieving one arm of the suture. We're going to place that in that specially designed suture passer and then atraumatically pass it through the labrum and ligament as is seen there. We'll do the same thing with the second arm of suture and then when we tie that down you'll see how the labrum and ligament reduces. So there you see me sliding a knot in from outside the body to tighten up that tissue. Here's a special suture cutting device that we use to cut the stitches and now you, the ligament and labrum is more where it should be on the glenoid rim. So here we are passing the sutures from the second anchor as we work our way up. Again, I'm placing it through the tissue in a horizontal mattress fashion, it's called, where both arms of the suture go through the tissue. And then we'll tie that down just like we did the first stitch with the sliding knot. Then you'll see the suture cutting device coming into place. And here you see our completed repair. In this case it was a four anchor repair. Looking from above you can see how the labrum and ligament has been reduced to the glenoid rim. Then we can look from behind posteriorly and probe our repair and there's that nice bumper effect we like to see with arthroscopic repair. So you can see our before picture of the labral and ligament tear away from bone and here you see our repair once complete. So in summary when the shoulder dislocates the ligaments tear away from bone creating a bankart tear of the labrum. The ligament and labrum can be repaired arthroscopically restoring stability to the shoulder. Thank you.